Welcome to another one of Dr. Russ's air rifle adventures. I, I think this is 109. You're in pretty good company. Over 1 million views have happened on our channel from all over the world. As uh, those of you who want to get some instruction, some information, and maybe even some inspiration on air guns. These happen to be one of Dr. Paula's and my passions, and we just love to, to share it with you. Uh, this happens to be an FX Dreamliner. Uh, our viewers include people who haven't even bought their first air gun yet, and some others who have, and they're working their way up with two or three or four. And uh, they might include just CO2, uh, they might include uh, springers, they might include uh, uh, brake barrels, and uh, might include uh, PCPs, that's what this one here is. And maybe lastly end up with a large bore. This is not a large bore. This happens to be in uh, my uh, favorite caliber, that's 25. But again, my favorite doesn't have to be your favorite. And the reason is, it's really based upon what kind of shooting, what kind of neighbors, what type of critters you have in your backyard. There's no sense buying some large bore gun and then letting it just sit. I have that AEA Zeus 72 caliber. <laughs> It does more sitting than any other gun I have. But on occasion, I get out and it's ready for me. Uh, but you may not be able to hunt out west. You may not be able to hunt in upper Michigan. We're here in southeast Michigan. And uh, Paula and I uh, really just are gratified that you look to us as one of your information resources. Today, uh, we've got several different type of videos. We do reviews on air guns. That's probably the predominant part of our, our uh, videos, YouTube videos. We're on Rumble. And we're soon going to be on a new type of videos uh, that YouTube has. I think they're trying to compete with um, uh, TikTok with some really short ones. I understand that we've been approved in We'll be able to participate in that here in the weeks ahead. I'll let you know. I think it's around the middle of February before that complete channel of YouTube or new venture of YouTube gets started. But our uh, videos fall into categories. Sometimes it's Dr. Paula's passion, and that's raising AKC European Dobermans, often for first responders, often as service dogs. Uh, I use a service dog since I served in Vietnam. I find it always more comforting if I have one near me in the same room. Um, another one of our uh, is to share our faith. And we often have that in the type of video we're going to be doing today, and that's uh, a, a group called Are You a Great Air Gunner? And the reason uh, I picked that title is I think it's really difficult, if you will, to be a lousy person with no discipline, no faith, but you want to be the best, greatest plumber or electrician or carpenter or executive possible. And so to be a great air gunner, let's just work on who we can be first. Well, this is a beautiful PCP air rifle. As you can see, it's from FX. It's the Dreamliner. It has, uh, it has two air pressure gauges, which tell you immediately that this is a regulated gun. And almost all FX air guns are regulated. Regulated means it has a little capsule in it that fills up with air of a lesser power and maybe the 4,500 pounds of air pressure that are up here. And it allows a consistent amount of air pressure and amount to be fired each time. That keeps the groups much closer together. So uh, 
even with some power assist knobs. Uh, good scope. This one has one of Donnie FL uh, suppressors. It comes with the gun. Uh, it's got more than a 20 inch barrel, I'm sure. And uh, this stock is adjustable. Before we get into uh, the information that we want to share with you today, let's make sure that we cover just a couple of things. One, if you will, give us a thumbs up. Uh, secondly, leave a comment. I try to answer every, each and every one of them. Uh, and thirdly, uh, if you can, subscribe. That way you can click onto that little uh, oval circle of me not to see my photo, but to access our channel of over a hundred videos. And uh, I'm sure you'll find one in there that could be of helpful to you. I recommend that you review those on accuracy. Uh, I was a competitive shooter with powder guns at one time and I've brought that skill set into the air gun world. Okay, let's get started on today's video on how we can be a good air gunner by first being a good person. I find that we're a whole lot better if we don't have any debt. You say, well, that would be nice if I didn't have any debt. Well, let's see if we can help you with that. You know, there was a uh, famous CPA who said there's acceptable debt and unacceptable debt. Let's define which one is which. Acceptable debt, by his definition, and I would agree, is when we borrow money on something that is appreciating, like a home. So if the uh, in, uh, uh, interest rate is, say, 3%, but that house that you're in is increasing by 3 that's that would be acceptable. It gets even better if uh, uh, it was increasing in value faster than the debt has taken us. But that would be the only definition of acceptable debt. There are some collectibles and things like that that if you know for sure it's going to be worth more in the future, you might want to uh, buy that. But how do we get out of all the other debt? Well, if you say, well, I don't have any other debt, I pay my bills as soon as I get them. Well, let me help you. If you paid your electric bill today, it was $100. And you're not going to pay till next month when it's maybe $100 again. But tomorrow it's $103. And the next day it's $106. So you're in debt. One of the ways that I overcame that stigma, and it helped me keep track of my checkbook too, was that I always rounded up. Uh, so if a bill was $102.09, I just wrote a check for $110. 105. What did that do? That meant when I was done paying my bills, every one of those companies owed me. And the second thing that was good out of that was that it was very easy to balance my checkbook because I don't write checks for $102.08. I write checks for rounded off numbers like 110. Boy, that's going to help you get out of debt. Now, some of you say, how can I be sure? that they're going to credit me that excess. Trust me. They catch you if you wrote the check for five cents short and add that to next month's bill. They also, their computers, catch it when you overpay. And in every case, I've been credited that amount in the following month. Let me get around with a couple of uh, financial tips. I promise I'll get around with some good hunting tips that might help you out as well. Uh, I think one of the things you want to do is know that you're not going to ever take a cut and pay. If I told you you were going to have a cut and pay by 10% or 20% tomorrow, you'd say that's a catastrophe. What if I said your pay tomorrow is going to be cut by 50%? I would say that's un unfixable. Well, believe it or not, that day's coming. Oh, you may be the best person at your firm and the last one they'll ever lay off. But the reason I know your pay is going to be cut is the day you retire, whether that's 62, 65, 70. I work to 75. And uh, 
uh, you've got to be ready for that day. And I got to tell you, just putting aside 10, 20 bucks in a 401k or something similar to a 401k is not the solution. You're going to have to get out of debt. You're also going to have to save your money wisely. Um, if your employer matches your contribution, and maybe they match 50 cents on the dollar, maybe they match 25, maybe they don't match at all. I think 401ks are good, but when they match, they're phenomenal. Let's say I throw $100 in and the boss throws 100 in that same day. Now I have 200 and depending on which one of the accounts I select, let's just say it's one that I want to keep the math simple here is 10%. Well, then uh, a year from now, that 200 will, will have grown to 220. You see, I've got a pretty good eye on and understanding on investments. There are none in the world that make 100% in the first nanosecond, except a matching 401k. Even if it's 50 cents on the dollar. I don't know of any of them that makes 50 cents, 50% 50 on your deposits in the first instance. But a 401k and a good employer can help you with that. Always be sure that you're doing that. Even if you had to get in there and rob it and take the money out uh, at a later date and pay a 10% IRS penalty, my goodness, the boss threw in 50 cents, 50%. Uh, so be sure that you match up with those at all times and save because one day you will retire and there will be a pay cut. And what we don't want is a drop in your standard of living. If you buy certain cars, then good. You'll keep buying certain. If you buy new cars, then maybe we can continue to buy new cars when we're retired because we're not going to take that cut and pay. Third, let me uh, give you this financial tip since I mentioned the word cars. We're here in Southeast Michigan and just about everybody here works for a car company or a supplier to a car company. Um, I got the GM discount because my dad retired from General Motors. And for years I bought new cars with his discount as a family member. I've since learned there's better ways to buy cars than that. And then the question is, what car? Should it be a GM, Ford, Chrysler? What car should it be? And uh, here's a way for you to open up your horse blinders and not just automatically always go and buy a Mustang. Uh, we need to find out if it's good stewardship. And the way we do that is this. I typically go to a dealer and I look at two and three year old cars. Uh, there's a couple in there that the dealer actually was using for demos. When you came in and dropped up a car, he might have given you one of his demos, hoping you'd buy a new one. They are extremely low mileage, yet they're one and two years old. That's the car I would buy. Now to keep my math simple, here's how you'll be a good steward with car purchases, which by the way, are, as I look at budgets, it's usually the second largest bill after a house. So your largest check you write a month can be the house and oftentimes the second largest check can be a car. So if we can help you in those categories, that would be, uh, that would be helpful on that day you take that retirement hit. And so here is how you research that. Get on Craigslist, eBay, something, and look at two, let's say three-year-old cars. And, uh, you know, they might be 20,000, 30,000, whatever it is. And then check it on that same car six years out. So if a car in three years is going for 30,000, but in six years is going for 15,000, that means it was cut in half in years four, five, and six. And if you will check the car of your choice with some other cars, you just might find that some other cars could be much better than the one you've been buying. Or you might just confirm the one you've been buying is the best you could do. So 
get the three-year price and get that six-year price by just averaging in uh, those that you find on eBay or Craigslist or a used car lot. That will help you buy a car that's going to uh, depreciate the least while you own it. Well, let's help you with some hunting tips. Uh, you'll notice this cactus plant behind me. I've got quite a few. We're living here in southeast Michigan, but I was born right on the border of El Paso, Texas, and here I'm almost on the border with Canada. And the trick to raising cactus is don't water them. Spray them once a week with just a little spray, and they just stay good and healthy. I should probably try to put them all in one big long planter. I haven't done that yet. For those of you who've watched our videos in the past, you know that we have a motto, and that is to stay safe, to stay sharp, and to stay silent. One of the best ways of hunting is if you can get some friends and uh, you alternate this exercise, but you have a deer drive. And first of all, you want to check the direction of wind so that those who do the deer drive, could be one person, could be 10, I've done it all, uh, that they're moving with the wind and their uh, smell is moving into that same forest or thicket or whatever and you're on the other side. Now let's talk about safe for a minute. If you wanted me to be in this deer drive and you're going to be aimed at me much like you are right now, I don't want to participate. You might just shoot me. So to be safe, you want to turn recognize, say it out loud, I'm coming through, but you're going to be shooting a crisscross as I come this way. And as the deer step out into open areas that you might be at, you, and if there's other people waiting for this deer drive to work, they would be along one side only. And so as we come through, I might just stop uh, 40, 50 yards before even the woods end and uh, ask you, were any in that batch? Uh, if they're not, they're not gonna come now. Please put your gun in safe, take a pellet, a slug, a bullet out of the chamber, and uh, I and the other deer, part of the deer drive will come forward now. That's one way you'll stay safe and a very effective method of hunting. A second tip when hunting and you're going to have to check your state's hunting laws to see what can and can't be done. But there are hunts that use dogs legally and hunts that don't. For example, if you're going to be hunting raccoons at night, you're going to want dogs and they'll tree that raccoon. And uh, you'll find that that's an effective way to hunt. But what about all the rest of the time? Well, I have to tell you, nine times out of 10, dogs are not allowed out on hunts. I've seen where there are special dog handlers who will come during a hunt with their dogs in the field. Uh, if you've wounded one and you're having trouble tracking it down, often the conservation boys will have some exception for that. And you may uh, find that that nose of a dog can find that deer or whatever it is that you shot. Um, I uh, try to take my, uh, one of my Dobermans with me when I hunt, but let me tell you why. They're disciplined. They're service dogs. They work on commands only. And they'll sit beside me and they won't make a sound because even that little whine that a dog can make can be heard by your critter. So what I'm looking for is that dog to get focused, they've heard something, they've seen something, and now I can look that way too. I like that. It really helps me while I'm hunting. And of course, I also use a slingshot and I'll shoot some marbles out in certain places to make sure that the deer are cleared out of that area or that they hear some noise over there, but not right here. So silence, dogs can help. Sometimes you don't want silence. You want noise. When would that be? 
uh, well, I was talking about the slingshot, making some noise, not where I'm at. But uh, if you're into the business of hunting and calling animals, oh my goodness, uh, that's a real thrill when you can actually communicate with the critters that you're harvesting. Uh, there's all kinds of callers. Uh, there's one with a little rubber, I've got one here, I just didn't dig it up, but uh, it barks, and believe it or not, squirrels bark. So you just hit this little rubber plunger and out, out comes this noise of a bark. I've also talked about having a small kitten cat, kitty cat. I've never done it, but I've got friends who do, and uh, squirrels do not like felines or cats of any type. Maybe they've had some bad experience with bobcats or mountain lions or something. Uh, but they'll get out with just a small kitten on a, on a string and they'll get out on a limb and bark at that doggone cat. They want that feline out of there. Of course, that's when I harvest them. Um, deer, oh my goodness, all kinds of deer callers. Be sure you know, we want a, a, a doe in, in her heat or do we want a, a buck who's grunting and is challenging another buck to an antler fight. I had a dear brother-in-law, who Dennis, who's uh, in a VA hospital today, in his last days, I'm afraid. But uh, he and I would hunt together, and he liked duck and goose hunting. And he had several collars on his chest, all attached with a various string. And he would say, well, let's see if they're uh, interested in food today. And he'd go, quack, 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 and he'd do these noises. And, oh, they're not interested in food. Maybe they're interested in sex. And he would change the call, and I swear to you, those big formations would just circle right back in and into our pond, and, and uh, we'd have a good old time. Uh, so uh, it's something you can you can buy these mechanical collars which will do all that for you with a remote control you can have the collar out away from you they work real good with coyotes and, and varmint calls um, but they'll have 100 150 different calls seven eight nine ten per animal and uh, that's one way to to make noise while you hunt and another one would be to actually buy the collar and work on it. Uh, I have some deer calls, I have some elk calls too, and uh, uh, that's a lot of fun to call those big animals in uh, to you, and you're not moving, and you're not uh, making any noise, you're just waiting. So calling your game in can be a real treat. So I hope you learned something today I hope you can think about it and say, you know, I'll, I'll give that video a thumbs up. Uh, you may want to have a question answered and certainly just type in your comment. And you may want to subscribe. Uh, that'll uh, make sure you are one of the first to get the message. I think we've got uh, like 1,300 subscribers or something, but they get the first call that a new video is out. And so if you like that, you might want to subscribe. Don't worry about your secrecy. Google doesn't even give emails to me. Uh, but you have to give the email for them to contact you. And they contact you and let you know that one was just launched. Oh, we've got some good ones coming. Uh, perhaps you've seen that new Hatson um, Jet uh, 1 and 2 pistol. I've got that in 25 caliber. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did one on the Browning 800, and I stated some disappointment that it was now only available from Browning and Humorex in 177 caliber. What I've since learned is that that exact same powerful air pistol, it's a brake barrel pistol, uh, that it is available from Hatson in a 25. I think they call it a super select or something. TAC, it's got the word TAC, TAC driver in it. And uh, you can uh, get there, that pistol in 25 from them and 17 caliber from uh, uh, Humorex and Browning. 
Uh, nonetheless, that video, oh, we've got Nixon, Rainson, we've got all kinds of air gun videos coming. <laughs> and uh, we hope you're tuned in.